Steph Curry talked about his availability for tonight's must-win game four. Here is what Wardell had to say. Uh, I'm going to play. That's all, I, that's, all I, that's all I know right now. <laughs> Get as much recovery and healing as possible. Understand how important game four is. And I'm excited about the opportunity. Because I went through what I went through at the end of the regular season and coming back, I know exactly what it is and what I got to deal with. And there's, I guess, comfort knowing I've been through it before, but also you'd rather not have to deal with something like that. Jalen Rose with Steph Curry, not 100%. The Warriors with a must-win game four in Boston. What do you expect from Steph? I expect him to play. I expect him to be effective. And if you look back at the, the building of the Golden State Warriors dynasty, as I'll call it, it started with injury. When Steph Curry was early in his career, that allowed the team to give him a lesser deal mm -hmm. to build out the roster. And that became a championship team that also had another season that won 73 games. You add a Kevin Durant to that situation, you win two more championships. KD leaves, Clay gets hurt. Steph deals with injury. Draymond deals with injury. And then Bob Myers drafting Steve Kerr, player development with his staff. And before you know it, you add a Wiggins as you parlay D'Angelo Russell. You continue to build throughout the draft and you add Jordan Poole. Gary Payton II becomes a rotation player. And Kaminga and Wiseman, who's not even playing for this team. And so now all of a sudden when Steph is healthy, you put him back into this team, they're in the NBA Finals. And so we've seen Steph earlier in the year deal with this kind of injury when Marcus Smart dove into his leg and he got injured. Steve, Steve Kerr said he could have continued to play in the previous game, but he took him out because they were getting waxed. I feel like once he puts on his uniform, like everybody else in the NBA Finals is dealing with bumps and bruises and aches and pains, I feel like he's going to be ready to go. And like I yep. tell you, Jacoby, it's something they do in these professional locker rooms to players. <laughs> You can see him walking in looking like Fred Sanford. I've been there, man. I remember times when I was playing in Chicago. I'll never forget this. I was walking down the stairs, and I could barely stand up. I went out that night and had over 30. They gave me some stuff. I was like, oh, thank you very much. That's what I believe is going to also take place if Steph needs any kind of pain killing or shot, which I don't believe he's going to have to take. But I do anticipate he's going to be aggressive and effective. And here's also why. Why? When he said he understands the importance of game four, let me, let, let me tell you a little bit more what he means. If they lose game four, he knows they're going to lose the series. Yep. That, that, that's basically what he knows. That's what Clay knows, too. You see what Clay was like, hey, we hope he plays. If he plays, we know if he doesn't play, then we going to be extremely tough to win this series. So I'm expecting a good game. I'm, ex I'm actually expecting the best and the, the best play in the closest game that this series has had so far. Well, the Warriors are going to need Steph Curry to be his best, but they're also going to need other contributors as well. Draymond Green has such an impact on game two. We spent so much time talking about the antics and what he does off the ball and all the hustle plays he makes. Game three, he did not have a good game. He spoke about the mindset going into game four. Here's Draymond Green. It's just about me finding that balance. And, and just like I said on, on my podcast, being Draymond Green, uh, I know how to be him better than it, I can be anyone else. I know how to be him better than anyone else can be him. So I just got to be myself. Jalen, 15 points in the series, 15 fouls in the series. How can Draymond get back to being the impactful player, making winning plays for the Warriors? Yeah, those numbers are super ugly. I think Houdini had a song say, last night I had a long talk with myself. That's what it sounds like for me with Draymond. And you're right, Jacoby, it was a tale of two games, how he had such an impact when the Warriors won, and yet it was the reverse when they lost. But here's what also has to happen. He has to be some sort of threat offensively. Yep. See, if I'm Ime Adoka, I'm telling my team, please keep the turnovers down. Please make them play against our half-court defense, where there are no weaknesses on our defense, number one. And number two, 
We can sag off a of Draymond. We can play five defenders versus four offensive players in a lot of help situations. And so for Draymond, yes, the defense is going to be there, I believe. I don't think he's going to do anything to get himself ejected. And I do think his points, rebounds, and assists are going to be more than 10 in this game. But what I really hope happens is that he's aggressive when he gets opportunities to score. Because if you just do some simple math, if Steph, Clay, and Poole all have 25, that's 75. In the last game, they scored, what, 107, 108? You're still going to need some front court players. Wiggins, Otto Porter, Looney, Draymond Green. You're going to need those guys to give you some offense. And Draymond can also be somebody that helps his team in that area also. Key front court player for the Boston Celtics, Robert Williams III, has been in and out of the lineup all playoffs long. He's been hobbled. He looked good in game three. How important is it that he can be the same Robert Williams III we had in game three and game four? You know what I like about pieces in one big chess game? We're going to talk that? about the stars, Jalen and Jason. We're going to talk about the Splash Brothers and Draymond. But I don't think the Celtics win this series without Robert Williams' contribution going forward. Facts. He's that impactful. His height, his ability to change shots, block shots, um, a lob threat. And, and he is hobbled, as you mentioned. But the crowd in the team gets, gets charged up when he does a rejection like that. And look, giving him some offense, Jacoby, hanging on the rim with two hands. Giving him a little short offensive rebound. Look at that height using it over the defender and getting the offensive rebound. Look, that's height, Jacoby. Yep. That's why they drafted Wiseman, to play against guys <clears throat> like this. But since he can't go, Draymond Green and Looney have to be up to the task. But again, it's great to see Robert Williams out there performing the way he does. That's why I'm glad we're giving him some love. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.